Today, we're going to create our very own user flow from scratch. I'm also going to explain what, why, and how. What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we're stepping into the world of UX design and we're going to need to cover user flows. All right, so what's a user flow? Well, basically, anytime you have an app or a service or website of some sort, you have a bunch of different tasks or objectives that a person or a visitor or a user might be engaged in. Um, what are the processes or the steps that a user must take to become a member? Um, what are the tasks that a user has to take in order to like a video? There's a bunch of these, there could be hundreds of them. And you can create a user flow for each one of them. And this helps you ultimately in the early stages of the UX process, it can help you formulate the ideas before you get into the step of creating high fidelity mockups. All right, so there's a bunch of different types of user flows here. Um, you can have simple ones like this that are just based on labels with uh, you know text, or there's ones based on wireframes, sort of like this. There's also user um, user flow services. Uh, here's Overflow.io. This is probably the most popular one. I, it, it does it is price you know it does cost money, um, but it is really solid. Um, you can see these examples of like high fidelity user flows, cross device flows, wireframe based user flows. Uh, and so it just makes the process of creating these quite easy. Uh, you can also have like as a part of Figma, there's a template called UX Flow 2.0 that has a lot of this, like the, the wireframing templates created for you, as, along with the little connections between them. It's free. Um, there's also wireflow.co, which is also free. And it's just an app for creating these user flows, although I don't think you can add captions and stuff like that. Um, but for me, we're just going to use Adobe XD. I'm going to create mine from scratch, essentially. Uh, and it's going to be for a real, real purpose, the designcourse.com re relaunch. And the user flow I'm going to create for that one is, how does a person become a member? This is an important question. How many screens? How many clicks does it take? And that's going to help me formulate the idea before I start getting into the high fidelity mock-up process. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, before we begin, some of you may not know, but early in the year, I released a UI design bootcamp on Scrimba. Now, Scrimba.com is one of the hottest new ways to learn coding as well as design. At Scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So visit the very first line in the description of this YouTube video to access my course along with many others for a very low monthly fee. All right, here is designcourse.com. This is just a, a landing page just to collect your guys' email and girls, of course, uh, for the anticipated launch. Um, in, I suggest you put in your email, by the way, and uh, that way you can be notified when it does launch, which is going to be in several months from now. But anyhow, I digress. This is going to be uh, the basically the service that I'm going to create a user flow for. All right, so you can have many user flows as a part of a single project. Um, some can be real complex. Uh, others can be just directed at one specific task. Uh, that's a part of a web service or an app or whatever. In the case of my service, I mean, it's going to be a subscription based service where a user pays a monthly or a yearly fee uh, in order to access all of the content that's on my service. So there could be a lot of different uh, obje objectives for a person who uses such a service. One could be, I uh, them watching a video or at, one of them could be completing um, one of the UI design challenges. Uh, another could be um, becoming a member. And that's the one that we're going to do. So we're going to take them from the landing page, uh, which this is not the landing page for when the service launched, of course. Uh, and we're going to take them from the landing page and see how fast we can get them to become a member. And you want to do so in the least number of steps possible, if that makes sense. All right, because the more steps that you have, the higher of a degree of likelihood that you're not going to have, you're going to have a, a lower amount of members. All right. So this is going to be the one of the, the use cases for a user flow. 
before you get into designing the actual high fidelity prototype or even even a wireframe, uh, you can use this process, this user flow process in creating this diagram uh, to get the idea out first without having to jump into uh, a wireframe and creating wireframes or high fidelity mockups. All right. So let's go ahead and step in to uh, Adobe XD. So Adobe XD doesn't really have a dedicated user flow feature. Um, neither does Figma. There's there's templates that you can get that have these little assets here like this. I created this one myself. It's very limited, obviously, but it's going to work for what I need. I didn't feel like designing all this stuff when I'm working on this tutorial. Uh, but there are actual user uh, user flow services uh, out there. Um, some are free, some are paid. But I figured I wasn't going to feature any of one of any one of those over the other um, yet. Uh, I just wanted to to just create my own here, just so you can do it in XD. So um, one of the things that you can do is I instead of having each of these steps or these lines or these arrows pointing to uh, you could have them point to like say for instance uh just a caption that says home page like a little circle that says home page in it and then the next step would go from that circle to another circle that goes to another page so you don't even have to have mock-ups uh or wireframes or high fidelity you can also use wireframes though as well so it's up to you and it depends on how much time you want to uh put into your user flow so what I'm going to do is get UI kits here, and then we could choose uh, wireframes. So we can use wireframes like this. So you can just choose download kits. And for some reason lately, when I get up a tab, like it hasn't been working well. So you can see right here, here's the zip file. Um, if I open this up, you'll see we have wires.web and mobile. So these would be mobile interfaces. Um, this is going to be web-based interfaces or wireframes rather. And so all if you do is just drag this to your desktop and then double click it and it will load up in your Adobe XD. So I'm going to double click it. It's loading on the other screen. And there's a lot of stuff here. Look at all of these artboards. So they're all uh, categorized into like UI elements, sign up, onboarding, activity feed, profiles, messaging, blah, 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 blah. And these are just uh, really quick ways to get up uh, UIs if you haven't yet created your own. Um, so it's very handy in that context, and especially a context for you know what we're about to do, which is creating a user flow. Um, so one of the um, what we what we basically want is just something to represent uh, the the home page of the service. So one of those screens is uh, right here. Now I changed it to have like a little join button uh, right here and I kind of like uh, dimmed out the rest just to show like, okay, this is the join button. This is where they're going to click. Um, after that, uh, we're going to take, where do they go from that join button? All right, well, we'll go straight here. Now again, some of you might be wondering, uh, why don't I just use the prototype feature between these elements? You could do that in addition to this. What is nice about a user flow is you can see everything in one step. Like a, 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 when you step out from a macro level perspective, you don't have to use uh, an actual prototype. There is value in seeing just one screen between each step, and that will really help you. And plus, in order to have a prototype feature, you have to have at least a wireframe already worked in, and that's gonna be more work. So the idea is to avoid unnecessary work here. Um, so when they click on join, where is it go? Where, they, where is it going to take them? So these are important questions. That's a part of the UX process, um, and it all depends on which. It's all dependent on your specific project or your app or your service. Um, for me, we know it's a subscription-based service, and I'm going to have different tiers or plans. T i e r s, not not like the crybaby baby tiers. Maybe some of those too, um, and so we have to figure out a way to present that the, those different plans to them, right? And I think that would be the logical next step. They click join, they have to choose the plan. All right, so there's another, um, I kind of created this one um, based on one of the other examples. And this is annoying, like if you have something outside of an artboard, like this right here, and you paste in an artboard, 
and it goes uh, behind it, it'll become a part of that artboard. No big deal though. Um, so this is just a very rough wireframe of the choose your plan right here. Um, I'm not sure why I'll put two, probably have three there because I'll have like, a, well, I'm not sure. I honestly, I'm not sure yet. And so that's why I don't even want to deal with trying to create a high fidelity mock-up when I don't know how I'm going to present the plans. See, because I want to have a monthly plan that's either like $14 or $19 a month. I also want them to choose if they want to do it yearly. Um, and also I'm going to have a higher place plan, price plan that gives people access to live UI UX workshops on a bi-weekly basis. Um, and also project submissions where we rate them. So I'm not sure how I'm going to present that stuff yet. And that's okay though. We just know that for now at the very early stages, we're going to have a choose your plan section uh, after, which will be the first step um, after they click join and they want to become a member. So these like little uh, higher, you know, these buttons right here, these would be buttons that people click to select the plan. Where do we go from there? Do we put them straight into the order uh, process um, or do we have to ascertain whether or not they're logged in already or not? If they're logged in, they'll probably just go straight to the order page where they enter their credit card details or choose PayPal. Uh, but if they're not logged in, what do we do then? Do we send them to a, another form for becoming a member? I uh, like where they create a user account at least. Um, so, these are questions that we have to ask and you as one person, as a person who's responsible for creating this user flow and maybe perhaps the, the high fidelity mock-up in the end as a UI designer, you make, you make assumptions, right? And so you need to put this stuff in front of other people, uh, your team ultimately uh, at that user flow stage so that you can really work through the process together to say, you know, more minds are better than one, right? And so the, somebody else might come up with something that's better. So what all you can do as the person who's responsible for this at this point in time is come up with your best guess in terms of where you think uh, the person should go next. So for this step, I guess we'll go here. Let me push this down. We're going to have this branch off into two different sections. So is the person logged in? All right. So I'm going to put this whole section right down here. All right, so are they logged in? If it's yes, it's gonna go over to this next screen, which doesn't exist. But if it's no, we're gonna have them go, here, let me move these down, there we go. If it's no right here, we're gonna have them go to another screen. So that will be a sign up screen, and this is also coming from the UI uh, stuff. Oh. In order to prevent this stuff from happening, I'm going to create an artboard just down here and it, wherever it's selected, there we go. So now I can just move it there. All right, so here's a create an account section right here. By the way, something you can also do, which can give it context as a part of your user flow. You don't have to do this, but you can. We can go ahead and put a title and or a description. So this is the home page. The user clicks the join button in the navigation. So it gives a little bit more context uh, in each one of these scenarios. So I could take choose your plan. I will get that centered up. All right. So this page will present uh, two different tiers for the design course subscriptions. All right. And then this one over here, we'll have another one. All right, so the user creates an account. A user uh, user creates an account. It will not uh, require a double opt-in. So if we required a person to check their email in the process of trying to become a paid member, that's not a good idea in my opinion because you're adding in extra steps. Uh, worst case scenario, they screw up their email. They can contact you for support in order to change up their email or if they screw up their password. So there's a lot of different ways we could deal with this. You can maybe not even have them enter a password. Uh, upon account creation, you can include a link to where they click it and then they can choose their own pass password after they've become a member. So there's a million variables. That's why the UX process is very important. And thinking about this stuff upfront before you put in a lot of work creating high fidelity mockups 
it just makes a lot more sense this way right so let's go ahead um, after they come here we'll have this go we'll have this little bit right here oh come on Gary grab the damn thing there we go All right so from here let me move stuff I know I'm very anal about this stuff I want it to be lined correctly all right that's the UI designer in me from here if they're logged in if they're not logged in either way it's going to go to the same page and that will be like a payment selection page so uh, let me take another there we go payment selection and then finally I uh, will put this down here So here's the payment selection. So the user can select I uh, between regular card credit or debit cards uh, or PayPal and they'll process their payment. So this is a very simple user flow that can help your team decide what is the best process. You know what? I think this one right here probably isn't the best process. We can minimize this perhaps to just three screens. We could take out this whole sign up section and if a person is logged in then that's fine it won't have to modify this page at all but maybe if they are if, if they're not logged in if they don't have an account there could be a little section here at the top of the form that uh, will have them go ahead and log in uh, or to, to specify an email and that's the only field you would require and if they're not already a member the system would know the back end would know automatically to uh, send them an email to help them set up their account further after they become a paying member uh, i think that would be the best bet and so there that's the purpose of a user flow so your team can get together and say hey this doesn't make sense we don't need this page right here as a part of the the uh the sign up process we want as few steps as possible so that it doesn't nothing unnecessary happens uh that would result in the user just leaving or forgetting about uh doing anything so this is basically the uh, the user flow process um, that I've come up with here for just the one example. And yeah, awesome stuff. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. And now you have a little bit uh, more knowledge perhaps than before when it comes to the UX design process. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this, make sure to subscribe. Click, click that new applause button too, if you want to, of course. And check out designcourse.com, enter your email for the relaunch, and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.